The mixing station is an important part of everyone's reef system. We spend a lot of time with our mixing stations, preparing new salt water, fiddling with our RODI units, and fetching water for other purposes. Today's episode will look at how I can make my mixing station more effective, easier to use, and nicer to look at. Welcome to Potomac Reef, my journey juggling our 180 gallon reef aquarium with family, work, and travel. Like most mixing stations, mine is set up to allow me to transfer water from the left container, which contains RODI, into the right container, which is for salt water. Once the water is in the salt water container, I can simply add salt, reconfigure some valves, and recirculate the water to make sure that it's properly mixed. While this works very well, it does involve moving a couple valves periodically, turning the pump on and off, and making sure that I don't overflow things. Is there a better way? The current problem I have is that if I turn off the pump when it's set up to pump water from the RODI unit into the new saltwater tank, the water level in the new saltwater tank will backflow through the pump back into the RODI unit. I'm interested in figuring out if there's a way to prevent this siphon from happening so that I can automatically turn off the pump when the new salt water tank is full. Looking inside the salt water container, you can see that there is a high return that agitates the surface and provides for top to bottom recirculation. I'm thinking that if I can extend this line above the water surface when the tank is full, that if the pump shuts off, it'll suck air and break the siphon. All right, this uh, orientation of the piping seems to be what's necessary. It gets the uh, outlet above the water level when the tank is full, which gives me a solid siphon. Pretty much anything else is gonna create uh, either a siphon or a backflow uh, just due to gravity without a siphon effect uh, back down into the tank. My saltwater tub has two optical level sensors from Neptune mounted in it. The low one shuts off the whole automatic water change system, and the high one gives me an alert and tells me it's time to come back and make more salt water. I used an apex optical sensor to set the high water level line uh, for the tank, and this sensor will shut off the pump when the water level covers its detector. Jumping into Apex Fusion, I set up a virtual outlet to operate as a switch to activate the filling function. I then set up another virtual outlet to control the filling function. The way that it operates is when the switch is on, it turns on, and when switch 14-1, which is my high level or full uh, optical sensor, is closed, uh, it then turns it off. I then updated my mixing pumps outlet. Um, as you can see, it oscillates already uh, basically once a day to just quickly agitate uh, the water in the tank. I also have a mixing function uh, that I previously set up, but then you can see that I added my fill function. So when that virtual outlet is on, uh, it turns on the pump. And the last line in that is the leak sensor, which is uh, on the floor by the mixing station and that turns everything off if there's ever water on the floor. This virtual outlet is an alarm uh, which triggers the email alerts and lets me know when the water level has reached the bottom of the barrel. It also operates uh, to turn off the whole automatic water change system with the new salt water and the old salt water uh, dosing pumps. When using the mixing station, I frequently have to flip these valves. I used BRS ones, which were a bit more expensive, but continue to be easy to operate after about a year of use. However, they're down on the floor level, so I'm thinking of putting a stand under this and raising it up to make them a little easier to use. While I was working down in the mixing room, I came upon uh, the salt bucket. Uh, they're amazingly versatile, and I use them uh, for a lot of different things. 
uh, trash can being one of them. Uh, the lid keeps my dog from grabbing things from there. However, it's often a pain to open them up when you've got a lot of stuff in your hands. I figure that if I drill a hole in the top of the lid, uh, I should be able to throw small items in there without having to open the whole thing up. All right, let's drill away. And there we go. And now let's try it in operation. It seems to work like a champ. My RODI unit has a manual flush valve on the RO membrane. When I'm down in the room here and the RO unit kicks on, I walk over and just open that for a few seconds to flush the membrane. However, the RO unit often comes on when I'm not here. So it's not set up to be automatic at this point. We've definitely got some more projects to work on down here in the mixing room. <laughs>